Welcome to my new series, where we explore the similarities and differences of roles in both League of Legends and Dota 2, through the lens of mechanically similar characters. In this episode, we'll take a look at the physical damage carry by comparing the champion Ash and the hero Drow Ranger. When looking at both of these characters, the keen observers among you might notice that they both have white hair. Other than that fact, they really have nothing else in common, so let's move on to gameplay. The physical damage carry, also known as ADC, or hard carry roll, is often the main source of sustained physical damage in the game. Heroes that fit this role best tend to be ones that scale really well with items and have a damaged steroid for their auto attacks. In this case, both heroes have bonus damage related to frosty arrows and a conditional steroid ability that grants attack speed and damage. When it comes to ranged damage carries, aka marksmen, the positioning is extremely important, as you don't generally want to tank damage while dishing it out. This often involves kiting and orb walking, terms referring to the fire move fire dance you see ranged ADCs doing. Here's where the first of many differences in the games can be seen. League of Legends is balanced around high mobility, while Dota is a bit more about committal and crowd control. Ash can easily maintain decent positioning without much of a hit to her damage, but in return, her attacks by default only slow enemy movement speed by roughly 25% at the early levels. Drow Ranger can upgrade her movement speed slow to 55% by level 7, but as a consequence, she has to deal with Dota's turn rate mechanic. Turn rate, also known as built-in lag, slows down how fast a hero can change the direction they're facing. Kiting is harder and always results in less damage. To be a ranged carry in Dota often results in having to make the following choice. Do you face your enemies head on with the full damage output or do you kite backwards at a significant attack speed penalty? In contrast, it's much easier for Ash to dance around enemies with ease in the more fluid movement mechanics available in League of Legends. Speaking of Dotto's committal nature, let's discuss the arrow volley abilities. Both Ash and Drow Ranger can fire a fan of arrows out, dealing bonus damage and slowing the first enemy hit. For Ash, this bonus slow on the ability allows her to use it as an extra kiting tool, again reinforcing the mobility focus of Marksman in League. In contrast, Dota rewards Drow Ranger for committing. If Drow channels the ability, she can fire two additional volleys after the first. More risk and more damage. Finally, I want to talk about the utility spells each hero provides. Ash actually has two such spells. One, a scouting tool in Hawkshot, an ability very similar to Rocket Flare minus the damage. And another, in her ultimate, a global ranged stun arrow, akin to a juiced up Mirana arrow. These two spells, coupled with her powerful slows, allows Ash to be flex picked into support at a very respectable success rate. Draw Ranger's utility comes in the form of an AoE silence with a knockback. Think Cho'Gath Feral Scream, also minus the damage. Now that we've covered their abilities to some extent, let's take a step back and examine the gameplay of these carries in their games. Both ADCs start off in the carry lane with the support in tow and will remain this way for a bit, so let's skip ahead. Although Ash doesn't clear waves or push buildings particularly quickly, she will likely remain bottom until her team needs her for the dragon, or until she, along with her support, choose to change lanes, just to continue what they were just doing, but somewhere else. There's no precedent in League for funneling as much farm as possible into the carry from all sources, so you won't find Ash full clearing the jungle and two lanes at the same time anytime soon. In Dota, there's no standard early game objective to look for and no jungler role. As such, carries like Drow Ranger will choose to funnel the jungle farm as often as they can afford to. Getting three volleys in one spell cast works great here and they could quickly clear out the jungle camps. The carry position of Dota can start out pretty stressful in the lane, but often has a much more relaxing PvE phase. If a fight happens where you think you can help, Either walk there or use your town portal scroll item to join the fight. Now that we got the gold, it's time to buy some items. In League, roles are very specialized where tanks can get giga health and assassins can get giga burst. 
In this balance of extremes, Ash is expected to buy damage and maybe some more damage later on. If you're feeling spicy, you can get an Immortal Shield Bow for some damage and shield, but then you might just follow it up with some pure damage going forward. The ADC Marksman does this not because big numbers are cool, but because if you don't go full damage, you just can't kill the other guy that went full defense. In a similar vein, an assassin not going into damage can't kill the healer that's going full into heals and shields. Dodo's roll triangle is nowhere near as skewed. Most tanks can do crazy high damage, and most carries can tank pretty respectable amounts as well. Supports can solo carry the entire game if they get a bit more farm, and the mage cannot sustain the tank. In this vein, Drow Ranger tends to build some survivability with every piece of damage that she buys. When looking at a Drow Ranger's late game inventory, you will notice not one, not two, but four or five defensive items, where damage is almost treated as a secondary stat. It's not about bursting down your enemy, it's about killing them before they kill you. Only a few hard carries in Dota can get away with having few to no defensive items. Finally, in the neutral game, Drow Ranger can often be the frontliner, abusing her engage range. I mean, come on, she outranges towers. Ash isn't really known to be the frontliner for League of Legends. Drow Ranger and Ash have a lot in common when it comes to their kit and the role that they play in the game, but it's fun to see how design philosophy of the games can change itemization most of all. Thank you for watching, and give it a like or share if you thought it was cool or learned something new. Until next time, I'm a potato. Thank you.